two of chapter three from quotations from Mao Zedong, Socialism and Communism. The next quotation. There is a serious tendency towards capitalism among the well-to-do peasants. This tendency will become rampant if we, in the slightest way, neglect political work among the peasants during the cooperative moment and for a very long period after. Next quotation. The agricultural cooperative movement has been a severe ideological and political struggle from the very beginning. No cooperative can be established without going through such a struggle. Before a brand new social system can be built on the site of the old, the site must be swept clean. Invariably, remnants of old ideas reflecting an old system remain in people's minds for a long time, and they do not easily give way. After a cooperative is established, it must go through many more struggles before it can be consolidated. Even then, the moment it relaxes its efforts, it may collapse. The next quotation. The spontaneous forces of capitalism have been steadily growing in the countryside in recent years. With new rich presence, with new <laughs> rich peasants springing up everywhere, and many well-to-do middle peasants striving to become rich peasants. On the other hand, many poor peasants are still living in poverty for lack of sufficient means of production, with some in debt and others selling or renting out the, their land. If this, this tendency goes unchecked, the polarization in the countryside will inevitably be aggravated day by day. Those peasants who lose their land and lose those who remain in poverty will complain that we are doing nothing to save them from ruin or to help them overcome their difficulties. Nor will the well-to-do middle peasants who are hand heading in, in the capitalist direction be pleased with us, for we shall never be able to satisfy their demands unless we intend to take the capitalist road. Can the worker-peasant alliance continue to stand continue to stand in these circumstances? Obviously not. There is no solution to the problem except on a new basis, and the means to bring about step by so step the tra socialist transformation of the whole of agriculture simultaneously with the gradual realization of socialist industrialization and the socialist transformation of handicrafts and capitalist industry and commerce. In other words, it means to carry out cooperation and eliminate the rich peasant economy and the individual economy in the countryside so that all the rural people will become increasingly well off together. We maintain that this is the way, the only way to consolidate the worker peasant alliance. The next um, quotation By overall planning, we mean planning which takes into consideration the interests of the 600 million people of our country. In drawing up plans, handling affairs, or thinking over problems, we must proceed from the fact that China has a population of 6 million people, and we must never forget this fact. In addition to the leader... I'm sorry, next quote. In addition to the leadership of the party, a decisive factor is our population of 600 million. More people mean a greater ferment of ideas, more enthusiasm, and more energy. Never before have the masses of the people been so inspired, so militant, and so daring as at present. The next quotation. Apart from their other characteristics, the outstanding thing about China's six million hundred, excuse me, 600 million people is that they are poor and blank. This may seem a bad thing, but in reality it is a good thing. Poverty gives rise to the desire for changes, the desire for action, and the desire for revolution. On the blank sheet of paper, free from any mark, the free sheet, the freshest and most beautiful characters can be written. The freshest and most beautiful pictures can be painted. The next quotation. After the countryside, excuse me, after the countrywide victory, the Chinese Revolution and the solution of the land problem, two basic contradictions will still exist in China. The first is internal, that is, 
the contradiction between the working class and the bourgeoisie. The second is external, which is the contradiction between China and the imperialist countries. Consequently, after the victory of the People's Democratic Revolution, the state power of the People's Republic under the leadership of the working class must not be weakened, but must be strengthened. The next quotation. Do you want to abolish state power? Yes, we do, but not right now. We cannot do it yet. Why? Because imperialism still exists. Because dom domestic reactions still exist. Because classes still exist in our country. Our present task is to strengthen the people's state apparatus, mainly the people's army, the people's police, and the people's courts, in order to consolidate national defense and protect the people's interests. The next quotation. Our state is a people's democratic dictatorship led by the working class and based on the worker-peasant alliance. What is this dictatorship for? Its first function is to suppress the reactionary classes and elements in those exploiters in our country who resist the socialist revolution, to suppress those who try to wreck our socialist construction, or in other words, to resolve the internal contradictions between ourselves and the enemy. For instance, to arrest, try, and sentence certain counter-revolutionaries, and to deprive landlords and bureaucrat capitalists of their right to vote and their freedom of speech for a specified period of time. All this comes within the scope of our dictatorship. To maintain public order and safeguard the interests of the people, it is likewise necessary to exercise dictatorship over embezzlers, swindlers, arsonists, murderers, criminal gangs, and other scoundrels who seriously disrupt public order. The second function of the di dictatorship is to protect our country from subversion and possible aggression by external enemies. In that event, it is the task of the dictatorship to resolve the external contradiction between the enemy and us. The aim of the contradiction is to protect all our people so that they can devote themselves to peaceful labor and build China into a socialist country with a modern industry, agriculture, science, and culture. The next quotation. The People's Democratic Dictatorship needs the leadership of the working class, for it is only the working class that is m most far-sighted, most selfless, and most thoroughly revolutionary. The entire history of revolution proves that without the leadership of the working class, revolution fails, and that with the leadership with the leadership of the working class, revolution triumphs. The next quotation. The People's Democratic Dictatorship is based on the alliance of the working class, the peasantry, and the urban petty bourgeoisie, and mainly on the alliance of the workers and the peasants, because these two classes comprise 80 per 80 80 percent of China's population. These two classes are the main force in overthrowing imperialism and the Kuomintang revolutionaries. The transition from new democracy to socialism also depends mainly upon their alliance. The next quotation. Class struggle, the struggle for production and scientific equipment, are the three great revolutionary movements for building a mighty socialist country. These movements are sure guarantee that communists will be free of bureaucracy and immune against revolution, excuse me, immune against revisionism and dogmatism, and will forever remain invincible. They are a reliable guarantee that the proletariat will be able to unite with the broad working masses and realize a democratic dictatorship. If in the absence of these movements, the landlords, rich peasants, counter-revolutionaries, bad elements, and monsters were all allowed to crawl out, while our cadres were to shut their eyes to, the, to all this and in many cases fail even to differentiate between the enemy and ourselves, but were to collaborate with the enemy, and were corrupted, divided, and demoralized by him, if our cadres were thus pulled out, of, pulled out, or the enemy were able to sneak in, and if many of our workers, peasants, and intellectuals were left defenseless against both the soft and the hard tactics of the enemy, then it would not take long, perhaps only several years to, or a decade, or several decades at most, before a counter-revolutionary restoration on a national scale inevitably occurred. The Marxist-Leninist party would undoubtedly undoubtedly be become a revisionist party or a fascist party, and the whole of China 
would change its color. I'm going to continue this in a moment.